Hello and welcome to City Beat. I'm your host, Tamika Keenan Norman. And of course, this show is all about giving you information on the city of Rocky Mountain. And today we're giving you some very helpful tips on how you can save money on your utility bills and how you can get assistance. And here with us today first is Tiffany Williams to talk about the WARM program or winter assistance for Rocky Mountain. I got that right, right? Yes, you did. Okay. How are you, Tiffany? I'm doing fine. And good. You? I'm good. And some folks may remember you from last year. I think it may, may, may Maybe around the summer, maybe June or July when you were on the show, along with Gloria as well, to talk about the WARM program. But this is going to be sort of like a refresher. Yes. But tell me what you do with the city first. Well, I'm a customer assistance specialist with the city of Rocky Mount. Primarily, I work with customers who are up for disconnect um, and they need assistance with their utility bills and they are seeking assistance from outside agencies um, such as Salvation Army, Social Services, um, various churches and different organizations within the city. So that's primarily who, who we work with on a daily basis but we also oversee the WARM program for the city. Mm -hmm. And how long so, has that program been going on? It has been existing since 1986. Wow, so that's a long time. Long time. <laughs> <laughs> but tell us what is the WARM program? Well, the WARM program is the city's program. It's the only program that the city has that is geared towards helping certain customers with their past due winter utility bills. Mm -hmm. um, and those customers would be customers that are 60 or older, disabled, or recently laid off customers. Um, that program, it runs January through May of each year, but we always do fundraising efforts year round. Okay, so for instance, you said recently laid off. How recent are we talking about? It's within 90 days mm -hmm. from a full-time permanent job. But so because the program does run between January and May, then that 90-day time period does have to coincide during the time when we're actually doing the program. Okay. So how do you make a determination as to those categories of people that you're going to help? Those who are 60 and up, those who are recently laid off, how do you determine that? Or do you work with the other entities to determine that? Well, that was already set by the warm board and has been in place for a while now. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as determining out of that group who gets assistance, um, during January through May, customers would call the Salvation Army because they are the ones that administer the program for us. Okay. And they would call to schedule an appointment there. And then from that point on, then Salvation Army actually does the screening for us. Okay, those who want assistance contact Correct. the Salvation Army. Correct. Okay. And there have been, I know, some folks who supported the effort in the past, people can not only ask for help but can support it as well. How can you support it if you have an interest in that? Well, there are several ways that you can support the program. One of the simplest ways is we always, you can always mail a check in to the city, mm -hmm. uh, made payable to the WARM program. One of the good things about the program is that it is 100% um, of all funds that are donated go towards assisting the customers. Um, another way is on the back of all of your city utility bills is a WARM authorization form. And using that, customers can, you know, they can volunteer to donate a dollar or more per month to have that added to their utility bill. Okay. Um, it's also a spot on the back where if they would like to round up their bill, that's another program that we started maybe about two years ago for customers. You know, that's an easy way just to round the change off, to round it up for you, you know, for mm -hmm. your utility bill, and you're still helping someone at the same time. Uh, but those are the main ways that you would you know, donate to the program, you would just fill that out and you can just mail that back into the city. Okay, and is any of that tax deductible as well? All of it is tax deductible. Okay. Um, normally what will happen is uh, you can call in. A lot of times we will go ahead and mail those thank you letters out mm -hmm. and customers are able to use those thank you letters as their receipt for giving to the program. Um, if a customer would like one, if they are currently donating and they would like one and they haven't gotten a letter, then they can call and get that from myself or Gloria. Okay. Now, what type of feedback, I'm interested in this, have you gotten, even within the past year, from folks who are seeking help and you don't necessarily have to call their names out, and as well as supporters, too? Well, the program is really popular. You know, as far as people that are seeking assistance, we we always have people that, that need help, um, mm -hmm. especially during the winter time when you're talking about your, your elderly and your disabled. Because when you're on a fixed income, it's really hard, you know, for them to have to choose between buying medicine and being able to pay for, pay for food, pay rent, and pay the utility bill. Mm -hmm. um, and WARM is able to help with not only with the electric part of their bill, but if that customer needs um, oil or if they need gas, if they need wood, uh, whatever 
you know, their heating source is, we are able to help them with that. Um, but when it comes to as far as with the support for the donating, we get a lot of support from our churches in the area, like I said, and it's a lot of businesses as well that, that help. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of customers will probably be surprised, but we do have a lot of the whole basis for the program. We have a lot of customers that agree to have money added to their utility bill every month in order to be able to help others. So, and that's where our support comes from year round. And it's good that there are folks out there who are willing to help. And a lot of people remember last year's show, we talked to some of those folks as well. So we always yeah. appreciate their assistance. We do. And giving is easy. Like it you is. just mentioned, it really is easy. It is. And, you know, we have so many different fundraising things. You know, even here at the city, um, the employees get to contribute to the WARM program. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times we do jean day on Fridays mm -hmm. where employees will pay $5 each to wear jeans. And that money adds up over the year, you know, paying to do that on Friday so you know we do a whole lot of different fundraising type way you know things mm -hmm. around the city um, as well as within the city to try to, to raise those funds and mm -hmm. boost that up and how do you and, and I know your partner Glory as well <laughs> yeah. how do you all get the word out because you have really been involved with this effort a lot I know last year when we talked you were excited about getting the word out too yes um, any any chance or opportunity that we get to go out and talk, of course, formats such as this help. Mm -hmm. um, also, anytime a civic group or organization wants to talk with us, if they want to, us to come out and talk to their group about the WARM program, and we're more than willing to do that. We don't have a problem doing that. Um, sometimes we do raffles and, and different commercials. We've done that over the past and other programs and, and different things that we do, but anything that we can kind of think of outside of the box, I guess, sometimes to, to try to, to keep that awareness out there, then that's what we try to do. Okay, well, anytime you need TV 19, we are definitely here. <laughs> but tell me again, how can folks reach out to you to get additional information, whether they want to support the program or if they want to receive assistance from the program okay. as well? Well, the easiest way would be to contact the business office, the utility business office. Um, my number is 972-1358. Um, Gloria's is 972-1533. Uh, but all they would have to do is to call us. Um, also, if you call into the main customer service number, if they're just talking to a customer service rep, um, they can let them know and they can either transfer or they can add it if they want to request mm -hmm. um, to be enrolled in the warm, you know, for warm as far as to do donating. Okay. Uh, a customer service rep can handle that also. Um, but the easiest thing, the easiest way to be able to do it if they want to, to do that is on the back of their utility bills. Mm -hmm. They can just fill that out and send that in to us, and once they send that in, that's really all they have to do. Okay, and you said yeah. the program runs January through January May. January through May of each year. All yes. right. Well, thank you, Tiffany. Anything additional you want to add today? That will be it. I, I just encourage, especially right now during this time of season, um, you know, it's the holiday season. It's starting to get really, really cold. Mm -hmm. You know, I would encourage the customers to, to think about your neighbors and the friends that, you know, people that you may know that are struggling and, you know, they may need this assistance. So I would encourage, you know, if you're looking for an organization to be able to donate to, all of our funds, that all funds that are donated, 100% of it goes to helping the customers. Um, there are no administrative costs for anything of, of that nature. So, and that's very unique about the WARM program. Mm -hmm. But I would encourage them, you know, to reach out to us and to help us out so that we can get these people the assistance that they need. All right. Well, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for You're all welcome. that you and Gloria do. We appreciate it. Thank okay. You. And yes. thank you for tuning in. We're going to be right back. We're going to give you some tips on energy audits as well. I'm Tamika Keenan Norman. This is City Beat. Sorry, but it's over. Is it the lion? No. Is it because I still live with my parents? How? The 200 bucks I stole from your purse? 250. Is it because I took your sister to Hawaii and not you? <sighs> no, Jerry, that wasn't it at all. Then what is it? You don't recycle. <laughs> what?
Hello and welcome back to City Beat. Thanks so much to Tiffany Williams for coming on the show to talk about the WARM program or winter assistance for Rocky Mountain. And if you're just tuning in, today's show is all about providing assistance on your utility bills with various programs that we have throughout the city, including WARM. We'll talk a little bit later about energy audits. And here to speak with us today on Energy Share is Bernetta Smith Battle and Deborah Jenkins from the Planning Department. Hello and welcome to City Beat. Hello. Hi. Hello. I know it's your first time on the show, so we're glad to have you. You. Thank, thank and you. we're going to start with both of you. First, uh, Deborah, let me talk to you. What is Energy Share exactly? Energy Share is a weatherization program with the City of Rocky Mount. It is a rebate program. Mm -hmm. It helps um, citizens with insulation of the attic and um, the addition of a heating and air unit, the okay. purchase. Okay, and so you've been dealing with the Energy Share program for quite some time. When did it start with the city? It started in 2011, October 2011. Okay, so it's fairly recent. Mm -hmm. So, Bernetta, what's your role this year with the Energy Share program? This year I am the Energy Share Administrator, so I'm the one that you would see to um, submit your applications to, to bring in um, applications and paperwork and um, phone calls when you got any questions concerning Energy Share. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm assuming you'll be busy this year. Yes, <laughs> yeah. have been already. Yeah. <laughs> so, Deborah, uh, how many people have you served with the Energy Share program in 2011 and in 2012? In 2011, we served 63, and in 2012, it was 101 people. Wow, so a lot of folks. A lot of folks. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about some of your requirements to get involved in Energy Share. What do you have to do? Well, it's first of all, it's not um, income based, mm -hmm. and that's very important. So you just have to be a customer with the utilities department with electric or gas. That's the main requirement. Okay. Fill out the application, and you have the work done, and bring in your receipts. Wow. You also do have to have a energy audit. Okay. And you, you um, do that through the utilities department. The energy audit is a, it takes one to two hours to do that. And employees from the city come out, they set up an appointment, mm -hmm. come to your home, they go over your uh, entire house and make sure it's energy efficient. If it's not, they tell you where you need to make improvements to make your house uh, energy efficient. Okay, I've heard some folks have saved a lot of money through they getting have. the energy audits done mm -hmm. too, which are free also. Mm -hmm. Also free. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and I know you have to uh, take a part of an energy class too, right, Bernetta? That's as a correct. part of energy share. That's correct. Okay, tell the, me a little bit about that. Um, those classes are offered twice a month on Wednesday, um, council chamber here at the City Hall building mm -hmm. from 10 to 11. They are done through Gloria Hunter down in customer service. So um, that's one of the requirements that you have to have in order to be part of the energy share program. Okay. How beneficial <laughs> do you think those classes are? Because it's interesting, I talked to a gentleman, Mr. Sutherland, Mm -hmm. who participated in the program last year, and he said, girl, I learned a lot. He was so excited. Yeah. He said, I learned a lot through those classes. So how beneficial do you think the classes are? What do folks learn in those energy share classes? I think it's very beneficial. Mm -hmm. like, like Mr. Sutherland said, you realize and learn things that you didn't know um, prior to the class and then things that will make your house more energy efficient. What do you think? It would. Those classes help people, as well as the folks with the WARM program, mm -hmm. um, go around um, to, through their whole house and make it more energy efficient. Say windows, doors, caulking, um, how they can use different light bulbs mm -hmm. uh, to lower the energy bill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what type of feedback have you received in general, not just from the class, but from the program itself in the past years that you've been dealing with it? People call me, have called me back this year, and some of them put off going through the program. And they've said every month their utility bill has gone down. Mm -hmm. And so they're telling their neighbors and friends about the program. Okay, and that's one thing Mr. Sutherland <laughs> said too when I talked to him. He said my utility bill has gone down significantly mm -hmm. since getting involved in energy share and having that energy audit mm -hmm. done too. Yeah. So, Bernetta, what's the first step if folks think that they're interested that they have to do to get involved in this energy share program? The first step would be to do the application. Um, mm -hmm. You can download it it's on our website. <clears throat> you can download it off the website or you can call our office and we'll mail you one. Um, do the application, attend the class, do the audit, mm -hmm. and then the 
<clears throat> Rhett, the person that applied for, is responsible for finding the contractor to do the work. So, um, so whether you get into HVAC or you get mm -hmm. added installation, you're responsible for finding that person to do the work for you. <clears throat> and once you get that work done, um, our inspector will come out and inspect it. Mm -hmm. And it's a very simple process. Once he inspects it, you submit your invoice. I'll process your pay, um, application in four to six weeks. You'll have your reimbursement check. That's good. Yeah. It it's good to know when you're getting work done, you're going to get your money back. So right. that's a good thing. But um, tell me a little bit too, Deborah, how this program works as far as how long it lasts, because we know the funding, it, it, this program is temporary, right? Mm -hmm. It only happens at certain times of the year. Right. Usually mm -hmm. it's in the fall and mm -hmm. it's first come, first serve. So okay. once all the money is gone, that's it. So we encourage people to come mm -hmm. as soon as possible to apply and get the work done because it is first come, first serve. And folks, when they call this year, they'll be speaking with you, Bernetta, right? That's correct. All right. So tell me what uh, number they need to call and if they need any additional information. Um, they can call 972-1172, and that's my direct extension. Mm -hmm. And I will be more than happy to, if they have any questions or concerns, I'll be happy to help them walk them through the application process. Whatever they need, I'll be more than happy to help them with it. Okay. So any other additional comments that you all might have? I do want to add one thing, and that is it is for homeowners as well as renters. Mm -hmm. Renters just need to get permission from their landlord to have the work done. And that's it, just that's that simple. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one other and one other thing I don't think people um, realize is that you cannot have had the work done prior to your application mm -hmm. process. Okay. It's, you know, you have to do the application process and then have the work done. You know, I have had people call to say, well, I had it done maybe a year ago. You don't qualify if you had the work mm -hmm. done maybe a year ago. So it has the application has to take place first before the work can be done. Okay. But what if they come back next year and some additional work has to be done? That's they can they can apply then. But okay. it's, it's yeah, added installation and HVAC replacement. So, mm -hmm. Okay. How's the response been so far? It has been, it's been good. Mm -hmm. okay. I've, I've gotten quite a bit. I think I have over 25 applications already. Mm -hmm. So we've gotten good responses from it. Good, good. All right, so folks have a short amount of time. You need to come. First come, first serve. You heard Deborah and Bernetta talk about that. So thank you all for being on the show too thank today. You. All right, so many programs going on here with the city. Energy Share, Warm Program, Energy Audits, all a part of us helping you with your utility bills. I'm Tamika Keenan Norman. We'll be back with more on Energy Audits right here on City Beat. Would you like to reduce the energy usage in your home and save money on your utility bills? The City of Rocky Mount offers free energy audits to Rocky Mount Public Utilities customers. By signing up for energy audits, customers can learn how energy is used in their home, how to reduce their energy consumption, and how to reduce energy costs. Stay tuned for an inside look at the energy audit process. How you doing? My name is Terry. This is Tim. My name is Cody. This is my wife, Amanda. How you doing, Amanda? Hey. We're going to do your audit this afternoon. The first part of this audit is answering questions, basically asking questions about the house, energy usage, and then we'll take a look around and see if we can find some ways to save your energy. Uh, do you know the square footage of your home? Uh, it's 1523. Do you know what year it was built? I was built in 1998. How many windows do you have? Uh, we have 16 windows, including the, uh, the back door. Window on it. Do you have any French doors? Uh, no. How many incandescent light bulbs do you have? Just the uh, old around style. Say maybe maybe ten. Okay. okay. Say ten. Do you have any of the new compact fluorescent bulbs? Yeah, we have a few. We have uh, three here in this uh, in this fan, and then we have two in that bathroom, so we've got five. Okay. How many out lights, outside lights do you have? Um, we've got four floodlights and two lights at the door, so we got six lights total. Right. Of your interior lights, in a 24-hour day, about how many hours do they burn on average? Uh, I would say about five. Right. What about your outside lights? Uh, well, that front light stays on like all through the night, so uh, we'll say, we'll just say eight hours. Right. Yeah, I do need you to add it. Do you have a pull-down? Yeah, we have a pull-down. How many refrigerators? One. Do you have a separate freezer? No. Is your oven and gas or electric? Uh, it's electric. How many dishwasher loads per week? Uh, probably about 
One to two loads per yeah, week. Yeah, we'll say two. Okay. Why'd you look at her when I asked about dishwash yeah. loads? <laughs> no reason. <laughs> How many laundry loads per week? Uh, let's... Four to five. Yeah, four to five. Okay. How many hours is television on per week? Uh, we'll one say, to two. yeah, one to two, maybe. Do you have a computer? Uh, we don't. We don't use it here in that. Okay. Zero. So oven part of your stove. How many hours do you use that per week? Um, maybe two total. Yeah, two hours total. Okay. How many minutes for the stove top per day? Per day. Uh, thirty minutes. Yeah, let's we'll say thirty minutes probably. Yeah. How many minutes for the microwave per day? Uh, let's say five. Five to ten. Yeah, five yeah. to ten maybe. So we'll say five. Okay. Right there. Do you have a pool? No. Hot tub? No. For water consumption, the total number of baths and or showers for everyone in the home for a week? Uh, we do two a day per person, so we'll say 28 okay. right per on. week. Right on. So you have a digital thermostat, is that programmable or just digital? No, it's just digital, yeah. Right on. Is your water heat electric or gas? Uh, it's electric. <clears throat> for your heating and air systems, do you have a heat pump or? Gas bike. Uh, it's a heat pump. Do you know what year it is? Uh, it's, it's less than a year old, so 2013. All right. <clears throat> All For the most part on this, everything else we can walk around and take a look. And I can figure this out. As part of the audit process, the auditors will present the customer with a complimentary energy kit that contains various items to help reduce energy usage. The kit contains four compact fluorescent light bulbs, a low flow shower head, a can of insulating foam sealant, an air filter whistle, a hot water gauge, a refrigerator thermometer, a portable thermometer, and a DVD with tips on how to use the items in the kit. The customer will also receive literature on energy savings, natural gas safety, and electrical safety. We can uh, start in the kitchen with we'll uh, hot water temperature. That would be perfect. The energy auditors will also perform a walkthrough of the home to look for potential energy savings in electricity, natural gas, water, and sewer usage. The walkthrough will begin with the interior of the home and include looking in the attic and crawl space. The auditors will test the water temperature at one or more sinks in the home to gauge the temperature setting of the water heater. 120 degrees is recommended for optimal energy savings. The higher it is, the more electricity it uses. Okay. So, is it's going to maintain whatever temperature you put in there? So, okay. whatever, uh, however high you keep it, it just means it's just going to run more to keep it at that temperature. Mm -hmm. Okay. With the water heater, if it was uh, outside in a storage area under the house or in the attic or in a garage or anything, we would recommend putting a water heater blanket on it just to help keep the heat in so it wouldn't radiate as much. It's kind of like us putting a coat on in the wintertime. It helps keep the heat in. But uh, since the water heater is in a conditioned space, it wouldn't really be necessary that you would have to get that with this water heater since yeah. it's inside your house. To safely change the setting on the water heater, first cut off the power at the service panel box. To adjust the temperature, remove both covers on the water heater and adjust the thermometer for each heating element. The energy auditors will assist customers with adjusting the temperature on the water heater at the customer's request. As part of the walkthrough, the auditors will check underneath sinks to look for holes and openings around piping. If you were to add up all the openings around plumbing and electrical penetrations, it could be the equivalent to an open window in the home. To prevent air loss and help save energy, the complimentary energy kit contains a can of insulating foam sealant that can be used to fill these openings. The energy auditors will inspect the return filter to see if it needs replacing and demonstrate how to use the filter whistle included in the energy kit. Rocky Mount Public Utilities recommends changing your return filter every 30 days. The walkthrough of the home continues in the attic. So cool. one of the recommendations so we're going to put a weather strip around the parameter, around the parameter of this access. So when it closes up, you get a good tight seal. You can also put either Jensen board or insulation board, or either roll out bat insulation in between your steps, all the way up by this bit, man, a quarter inch. Okay. Just quarter inch thick. 
and you have adding insulation all around this area, this right here is a space for, like in the summertime when it's 104, 105 degrees up there, mm -hmm. high goes the cold, the hot air is sinking through this, coming down to your conditioned space. Okay. The same thing in the wintertime, when your conditioned air in here is sinking up through that, going up to your attic. Okay. Insulation, we recommend R30, that's the minimum code now. Um, with the insulation you have, you have about nine to 10 inches deep, and with R30, it should be about 12 to 13 inches deep. So you could use a little more with a newer house like you have. The code hasn't changed much since yeah. uh, the newer houses, so you wouldn't really need a whole lot of insulation if you had an older house that was built, say, in the 50s or 60s that only have like R13 or R19. It would really benefit you to add a lot more insulation to help keep the heat in the house. Okay. But um, you could add a little bit, um, but you really don't need a whole lot okay. on top of here. When not using the fireplace, it's best to keep the damper closed. The chimney is designed to draft, so when the damper is left open, the conditioned air inside the home is being sucked out, resulting in energy loss. Homes using natural gas and or gas logs should have carbon monoxide detectors. The auditors will inspect the home to see if detectors are in place. Another location where air loss can take place is around doors. One of the spaces where you get a lot of air leakage is around your doorway where you need more, more weather stripping. If you look right here, where you can see this air coming in, mm -hmm. any place air can get in, light can get in, air can get in. In this door, if you just adjust your strike plate, which is right here, if you just move that straight back, that door will seal. If you look now, you can see the air come in. Right. If light can't get in, air can't get in. Okay. With the, the new unit, you want to keep, try to keep these coils clean inside of here, wrapped all the way around. Right. Um, especially when you're cutting grass or stuff, just want to blow everything away, because especially when the unit's running, it can suck all that grass clippings and everything. You already see how it's getting some of the pine straw there. Yeah. But you want to try to keep that clean. And if it ever gets dirty or anything, you can make what they call coil cleaner that you could spray on that and it would foam up and you would just use a water hose and spray it from the inside out and it would rinse it out. Gotcha, gotcha. But if, uh, if you had a, we also recommend just have them serviced every one to two years okay. just to make sure it's running like it should and it's got the right Freon levels and things like that in it. Okay. So, but yeah, there, for this, there should be a light that comes on if, you're, if it ever gets warm in your house right. during you know, the hottest part of the day. Right. For the city rocking, it's two to six for us. Okay. So if you ever come out here and there's a light on and this is off. So this, how long do they cut it off? We hold it off between an hour to two hours. Okay. I don't know how they hold theirs off. Okay. Um, they have different plans right. or one's like a 50% plan and one's 100% where they cycle it on and off. As part of the walkthrough, the auditors will need to access the crawl space to look for subfloor insulation, check the condition of the ductwork, and see if moisture is present. Throughout the audit, the auditors will point out any visible electrical safety hazards, such as missing outlet covers, overloaded outlets, damaged or frayed electrical cords, and indicators of faulty wiring, such as discolored outlet plates. At the end of the audit, the auditors will discuss their findings with the customer, including observations of safety hazards and recommendations for energy savings. A carbon copy of the report will be given to the customer that day, followed by a personal energy profile report by mail. This report shows the breakdown of energy usage and includes suggestions for savings that are specific to the customer's home and lifestyle. To schedule your free home energy audit, please call 252-972-1250 or visit the Rocky Mount Public Utilities website at the following address. Thank you so much for watching another edition of City Beat. I'm your host, Tamika Keenan Norman. I want to give a special thanks to Tiffany Williams for coming on the show today to talk about the Winter Assistance for Rocky Mount program. If you want to pledge your support for that program, just log on to find more details at RockyMountNC.gov. Also, thanks to Amy Blanton from our Utilities Department. She was the voice you heard on that piece about energy audits, yet another way to save money on your utility bills. Thanks again for tuning in to City Beat. If you need more info, log on to RockyMountNC.gov. I'm Tamika Keenan-Norman. We'll see you again next week.